everybody, welcome back to the Claremont Classic Garage. We're back uh, working on our 1948 Ford 8N, and today we're going to do part two of our electrical video. And we've got Cooper, Nugget, and Stuart over there keeping me company. So here's the scope of our work today. We're going to install a pair of headlights, a rear work light or plow lamp, a uh, tail light, a pair of flashers, a slow moving vehicle sign, and a trailer hookup. First thing we're going to put on is our slow moving vehicle sign. Even if you have no lights at all on these things, you should at least have one of these. So how I normally put them on, you'll see some people, they make a bracket and put it up on the fender here, or uh, there's all kinds of different ways to do it. Whatever you choose to do, uh, that's the right way for you. But how I do it, I make a bracket off the, the studs for the seat. Now this one, I just make it out of whatever I happen to have kick it around. And today I had this piece of quarter by one and a half flat bar. So to use it, I had to remove the seat studs and put ones a little bit longer in. If you don't have longer studs kicking around, you can just take the studs out and put in a 7 16 coarse bolt about an inch and a half long. That'll be just fine. But we put longer studs. And uh, this way, the sign just sits right here. It's not bolted to the tractor. If you're towing an implement, you can just lift the sign out and put it on the back of the implement. Now let's get it put in. And there we go. We got our sign on. So now we can start working on the lights. And I'm going to work my way uh, from the kind of the furthest point away, this fender and we'll work our way back up to the headlight switch. Now we're going to prepare our fenders for final installation. The first thing we have to do is make certain that we've got a good ground. Um, there's two ways to do it. You can grind the paint off where the, where the bolt heads sit and then, and then grind the bottom here to make sure you get a good ground. But what I do is I just clean where the fender sits on the axle trumpet. And you can see here these witness marks, the spots where it was touching. So we'll just take the paint off those four spots and we will take the paint off the corresponding four spots on the bottom of the fender. Once we've got that cleaned up, we have to make sure that the current from our light can get back down to this ground here. On this tractor, we're going to be putting the lollipop lights on top of the fender where this rivet used to be because we had to drill the rivet out to take this bracket off so we could straighten out the fenders, if you remember back. So what we did is we drilled this hole out to 5 eighths of an inch. The stem of the light is half inch. So I drilled this hole to half inch so the stem will slide through it. And we made this one 5 eighths just so it's got a little wiggle room when we put it all back together. Now what we have to do is we have to clean the paint from here where the nut of the lollipop light is going to be and we have to clean um, these surfaces here to make sure that this that it's kind of a complete circuit for the ground. Once our fender is bolted securely onto the trumpet then we loosely install the bracket just get the nuts started on because you want it, I'll show you why in a second, you want it to be free. And get your lollipop light just sort of stuck in there. I use um, bullet connectors, crimp on bullet connectors to make my connections. And you want to try, you can't always, but um, anywhere you can, the thing that's getting plugged in, put the male connectors on it and put the female connectors on the end of your harness. Just for the simple reason that if it ever got unplugged while you were driving, um, you won't have a live, a live conductor banging against the chassis of the machine to potentially cause a short, blow a fuse, whatever. For wire, we're using this stuff here. It's 16-2. It's, it's a cord off of who knows what, but it's nice stuff. Um, wire is expensive now, so if you got any old appliances, whatever you're throwing out, cut the cords off them. It, it's it's wire you can use it so what we'll do now before we tighten up these bolts we'll tie wrap this connect conductor uh, to this bracket and get it down to the bottom here 
Once we've got the tie wraps fished around this bracket, then we can tighten up the bolts and everything will stay put. And then you just, you just kind of, you put one there and there's a little corner. You could just kind of sneak it in there between the bracket and the bead. And we tape it to the brake cross shaft and then run it over to the other side. Then we could tighten up all of these bolts here and that's this fender done. It was easy because it only has one light. Now we'll go over and get started on this fender. It's got all the lights. Now we're going to start putting our rear light assembly together. What we've got here is just a normal Ford uh, rear light bracket. It's a left one. Uh, for a tail light, it's just a, a plastic trailer tail light. I painted it Ford gray so it fits in nicely. And the work light is just an old headlight. And we put a switch in the back of it. And we can use that for our plow light. Now what I've done, this is a piece of 16-3 wire or extension cord or something we cut off an old appliance or something. It's good enough. So we're going to hook this up. Um, how I usually do this is I use green for the flasher, white for the work light, and black for the taillight and running lights. And while we're at it, we're also going to hook up a trailer plug. All right, so it's not entirely easy to see here. There's a lot going on, but you can see what we've done. We've got the white wire coming from the front to here, white to white. Then we've got the green wire coming, and from our trailer plug, we've got the yellow and green. Those are the turn signals connected to that green. There is no left and right on a tractor. It's just if you hook up a trailer to it, you want both taillights to flash. So that's how we accomplish that. And then the black wire in our 16.3 goes up to the the brown wire in the tail light, which is the, the parking light part of it. And then the brown wire to the trailer plug, which is also the parking light part of that, is spliced into that. Now we'll go over to put it on the tractor. We're gonna feed this wire through the hole in the fender and bolt the bracket on. There, we install our light assembly onto the fender. The, the 16-3 wire that feeds it, it sits in this in this groove here, and right at the bottom of it, you can see there is that hole. Now, originally that hole is sized to let one number 14 wire come through because that's all that used to come up through there. So what I do is I, I use a step drill and I open that hole up a little bit so that the wire can go through and have some room. There isn't really a ton of room under there to use a grommet as it would get squashed. But anyway, so that's how that goes. We've got all that stuff mounted on this fender. We've tightened up all our bolts and ran the wiring down. Then we will attach it to the brake shaft and we can go across and make some, we have to make some connections here. You notice this wire is only short and there'll be another piece of 16-3 that goes up to the front. Now we need some wire to run from the dash back to those lights on the back. Um, we use 16.3 and like I've showed you before, the cheapest place for me to get 16.3 wire seems to be to buy extension cords. Um, I could buy an extension cord cheaper than I can buy cut wire. Don't ask me why, that's how it is. I got this 50 footer off Amazon. Uh, there's probably enough on here to do four or five, maybe six tractors, depending on how, I, how I'm doing them. And the only other advice I can give you is to start cutting your hunks off this end because that way you've always got this end left if you happen to run over the saw, uh, the cord on your saw or something and need to put a new cord on it pronto. Run the wire through this hole in the casting. Uh, they all have it. Nine ends, two ends, eight ends, even Ferguson's all have this hole. And then flip it over to the other side. I'll show you how to clamp it after. Now we can make our connections here. The first thing I did was join the turn signal from the two lollipop lights together and, and attach it with the wire that goes up there. This green wire just continues on up to the trailer plug. Um, the, park, the park filaments of these things, I don't usually hook them up. So I've just joined them together and um, 
left it sitting there prone. Somebody can hook it up if they want to down the road, but as long as it's mine, they're not going to be hooked up. Um, I could have used just single wires for this, absolutely, but I had this stuff. Thinking about it now, dumb me, I could have split it. But anyway, it doesn't matter. Uh, what's done is done. So we can make all our connections now. They snap in nicely, these bullet connectors. You can also, quite frankly, on these tractors, I've used orange marettes plenty of times. It's not like they're cars out there in the salt and stuff, uh, especially if you keep it indoors. But anyway, that's that made. So now what we have to do, I'm going to attach these wires to the brake shaft, and then we'll get this wiring um, loomed up or, or uh, clipped to the tractor. The wire is held to the tractor by these little P-clamps. We just put it one, you know, every so often. It's important to put a couple here because your feet are there. So you want to make sure that wire's held good. And then you cut it off kind of up. Our headlight switch is going to be up in there. So we cut it off. It's going to terminate up in there. These are the headlight switches I usually use on these things. So it's a two position, it's an automotive type, right? So how I work it is the first click, you get the headlights and the tail light, and then the second click leaves those lights on and makes the flashers flash. So to make that work, incoming power goes to there, we'll install a fuse in it, and then when you pull it to the first click, we're going to hook the tail lights to there, the black wire. The dash light, it's just going to go up to our two gauges, are going to go on to that. This here where it says park, we're actually going to hook the headlights to. And then this one here, the headlight terminal, is going to go up into our two-prong flasher and then back out to the flashing lights on the rear. The headlight switch is in where it's going to be, and we've started making our connections. At the end, when we're all done, it's going to sit like that. But for now, I've got it just so I can move it around and make connections. Now, something in addition to what I said earlier at the bench, the wire for the tail light, we've also added the wire to the work light to it because it needs to get some juice back there. So that's how we're going to accomplish that. So we hook this up like we said we would. When you get your flasher, there'll be two terminals, one marked X, one marked L. L lights or load and x is the battery so what we can do now uh before i tie all this wiring up in there we're going to just have a look at um make sure that stuff on the back works and then we'll bundle all this stuff up and we'll get the headlights sorted out also this lead here is going to go up to the inside of the hood It'll get shortened up in a bullet connector put on it, and that'll join to the hood. So if you have to take off the hood, you just undo this bullet connector, and you can take the hood off. The wiring for the headlights, you can see it. It's already, it's hanging down under the front of the hood. It's already in there. So, fingers crossed, we're going to close the circuit to the battery. Now, one click. So that should be just the tail light. Yeah, you can see there it's on, and that should also send power to the work light. Yep, there we go. So those two work. Now, if I pull it the next click, hopefully we'll see flashers. Hey, hey, all right. The only light that's giving us a little bit of grief right now is... Um, the illumination for the ammeter because right now with everything just kind of floating around here this dash panel is actually not grounded so once we put the hood on and get everything bolted together it should pick up a ground and illuminate if not we'll just add a little ground wire on the back of it but i'm not worrying about that right now i don't really want to add any wires if i don't have to there's enough wires on it now what we're going to do now is temporarily install the hood sides 
so we can get the headlights all sorted out and make sure they work. So what we need to do before we start, we need to take off the paint around that bolt hole and the same with around the bolt hole there. That's so we could transfer the ground to the chassis of the tractor. And we also had to take off the paint around here where the backup washer for the light mount goes. That way we'll make sure we've got good grounds on everything. And while we're at it, we'll take this opportunity to get the alternator in the correct position and get the belt tightened up. So how we do that, we need to make sure the hood side is in the right position. And right now it's tilted forward a little bit, but we could fix it. So how you uh, determine that is you just crouch down and you sight along the top of this one and the top of this one should line up with that point right there, give or take. And we're there. And then what we're gonna do is look across and make sure the other one is level with this one. Uh, oh, actually it's pretty darn good. The back of it's a tiny bit high. So what we have to do this bottom bracket on the alternator, we have to just rotate it down a tiny bit, which, which will give us a bit of clearance here, and everything will be good. You don't want to rotate it down too far, or else when the axle pivots, the drag link will hit it. We don't want that. That's pretty much perfect. We've got just a little clearance there. And we've got plenty there. You see there, if you got like three fingers worth there, that's about as good as you're going to get it. Another little tip of the day for you. Um, if you're like me and think these modern alternators look kind of out of place on these old Ford tractors, just paint the thing the same color as the rest of it and it, and it disappears. They really look odd when the, the whole tractor is, is nice shiny bright red and this blob of cast aluminum is hanging out the side of it. So I, I paint them to match and they kind of they kind of disappear. Now let's have a go at our headlights. These are reproduction uh, track light dual lamp dual lamp? I think they're dual lamp track lights. I, I may be wrong. Uh, anyway, these are a pair of Repop 8N headlights and they've got car headlights in them oriented that way, so I kind of think somebody maybe had these on a rat rod or something. Not sure. We're going to leave the car headlights in them. Car headlights on low beam work work fine on a tractor. If you want, you can put the, the dimpled um, kind of work lights on. If you want to put work lights in these, there's the number for the 12 volt ones, 4419. Now, if you're changing up from 6 volts while you do this, and your headlights still work, just wire them in series and they'll work fine on 12 volts. So what I mean by that is uh, the power comes from the switch and it'll go into one headlight and then come out of that headlight over to the other headlight and then to ground. That puts the two lights in series. They'll both drop 6 volts, which adds up to 12. And you can run your 6 volt headlights on your 12 volt tractor. Anyway, let's open this up and see what we've got in here. Well, you can see what they've done here. They've, they've cut a few new index notches to get these headlights indexed how they wanted them to. And of course, none of them at all line up um, to turn this light 90 degrees. I would have to make a whole nother set of notches. So rather than do that, I'm just going to grab a pair of 4419s off the shelf and we'll put 4419s in it. So we'll go ahead and put these in. I made the two leads for the headlight. Um, this one goes from the, the negative side of it, or whatever side you determine. There's, these are not polarity sensitive. You can hook it up either way, it doesn't matter. And it goes to the, the ground goes to the screw, uh, the retainer for the, for the, the bolt. And then this one, when we put it together, goes um, through the center of the bolt there and comes out under the hood. We'll worry about putting an end on it once, once we get it together on the tractor and see how we want to hook it up. Jeepers, creepers, where'd you get those peepers?
She got a nice set of eyes now. Okay, so this is a 1948, and all things being correct, it should have the, the Art Deco winged um, headlight mounts, but they're $21 each, and the 50 and up ones are $8 each. So it got 50 and up ones. Now, who's to say that somebody might have bought this thing in 1948 and never went over to the dealer to get a light kit for it until 1950? And if that's what they did, these are the mounts they would have got. So it doesn't really matter. There's not, not really any, um, in air quotes, correct or non-correct way to do this. Um, 1950 and up tractors could have Art Deco winged mounts on them if the dealer happened to have a lot of the older kits. It's just, you know, they ended up with what they ended up. Anyway, let's see if they work. There we go. So we know we've got nice clean grounds and everything's good. I've just connected them up with jumper wires here because the, the actual wiring for them is in the hood. So once we get the hood on, we'll make our final connections under here and it'll all be good. Interesting. I've got the headlights on the park terminal. And when I, when I, when I pull the uh, light switch to the second detent to get the flashers going, the park contact actually goes dead. So I'm going to have to move that over onto the other side with the uh, tail light and work light. No worries. Easy peasy. All right, let's try it now. Okay, so we got our tail light. What I want to do now is put everything on and make sure the circuit can take it. We're not going to blow the fuse or anything. Should be okay. Yep, everything is on. Good. Last thing I've done is I've made this. We've got our little trailer plug here, and I don't like having a whole bunch of trailer wire hanging down. I mean, because the, the tongue of your trailer is going to be a long way away. So I make this. Hoppy sells these. It's a, they call, they call it a mag bracket or something. It's just a little thing, and it's magnetic. So you could plug this little extension I made into your tractor and magnet that onto the tongue of your trailer and, and it'll reach. That'll do it for this one. We got all our electrical done. In the next video, we're going to put the cooling system together, put all the fluids we need to put in it and just kind of go over it and tie up a bunch of loose ends and get it fired up. Until then, I want to thank you for tuning in to the Claremont Classic Garage. I hope you'll come back and see us again. And until then, this is Kevin checking out. So long for now.